Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone from all around the globe. My name is Eric Mail, and I'll be helping moderate today's webinar on Pluto Notebook support on Julia Hub. Today, we'll be reviewing the latest and greatest in using Pluto Notebooks on Julia Hub. From static previews to shared notebooks to interactively building on published notebooks and exploring the results on large computations, Julia Hub is a comprehensive platform for using Pluto.jl. We'd like to have this an interactive session today, so please write your questions in the chat and we'll either address them on the fly or address each question individually following the demonstration. With that said, I'd like to introduce you to today's presenter, Dr. Matt Bauman. Dr. Bauman is the Director of Applications Engineering at Julia Computing, obtained his PhD in bioengineering from the University of Pittsburgh, and is a longtime contributor to the Julia language. Please welcome Dr. Matt Bauman. Matt? Great, thank you so much, Eric. And thanks everyone for being a part of the presentation today. I'm excited to extend our series on Julia Hub uh, with a dedicated webinar about all the new things that we're releasing this week uh, live on juliahub.com that help support and, and drive Pluto Notebooks on the platform. Uh, so of course, you know, this is, a part of the Julia programming language. I expect many of you who are here are well familiar with the language. Uh, it's a modern language designed to be fast and expressive. And, uh, you know, Julia supports uh, a, a wide array of notebook environments, including the very well known Jupyter notebook environment. Uh, but we also have our own notebook environment called Pluto. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about the language itself. I want to dive in. And really, what we're talking about is Pluto Notebook support on Julia Hub. And this is a part of, of the many webinar series that we've been going through this spring and summer on Julia Hub itself. And there are a bunch of you know large tentpole features that we've talked about. Uh, so from April till now, we've gone through a bunch of webinars covering the interactive development uh, portions of the uh, of the environment, particularly focusing on the integra integrated development environment, that is VS Code. We've talked about a lot of the distributed compute environments and how you can you know have a, a cluster on demand that has dedicated access to to large data sets uh, with uh, a very easy to use and and uh, straightforward way of deploying interactive apps. We've focused in on distributed compute with Professor Edelman and myself talking about you know, ways in which you can structure your parallel computing. We've gone even farther than uh, just a few weeks ago uh, where we uh, um, put together large scale distributed compute with GPUs to do machine learning. Uh, and so you can check out all of these webinars on our website under the resources tab. There's a, a dedicated section on all of these webinars that we've been going through and you can find recordings there. And this, this webinar will also appear there in a few weeks as well. Today, we're really going to be focusing fairly narrowly on interactive development portion with notebooks. And that's where we'll, we'll focus our time and energy is, is largely walking through all the new things that we're doing to support the great work that is going on within the open source Pluto project by Fonz and his team and, and many others who have collaborated there. It's a, a rapidly developing project that it's kind of hard to believe, but really is uh, you know barely older than a year old uh, and uh, has, has really developed into an amazing platform for doing reactive and interactive development. So if you'll recall, if I don't know if, if any of you were a part, part of JuliaCon that celebrated Pluto's first birthday uh, a few months ago, we tentatively demonstrated a few of the features that I'll be talking about today. Uh, none of them were live at that point. They were all in development and kind of as we were developing them. And, and over the past few months, we've been working uh, to make these things live and, and refining them, making them more, more full class. Uh, so you know, what we'll be seeing today, uh, you know, 
Julia Hub is a straightforward place where you can launch applications, including the Pluto application. And first and foremost, we've updated the Pluto uh, uh, application to its latest version. This has lots of really cool bells and whistles included in it, including a dedicated package manager that makes it a lot easier to work with packages within the Pluto environment. But beyond that, on Julia Hub itself, we've built into Julia Hub a file manager to manage all the notebooks that you're working with, making it easier and quicker to start up the notebooks and, and get them up and running. And what's really fun is that you know we now support generating HTML previews on Julia Hub itself, as well as sharing notebooks that you've done and exploring others' shared notebooks. So all of those features really are, are best shown instead of talked about. So let's dive out into the demonstration. To do that, we'll go directly to juliahub.com. Uh -huh. Bring this over here. So I am already logged in. Uh, if you're not logged in and, and go to the website, you'll see that I, you know, I, the kind of information about getting started. And you can log in very simply and easily by continuing with any of the authentication mechanisms that are available here. I've already logged in and I've also already gone in and set up uh, my, my payments. So that way I'm able to, you know, uh, uh, start up compute in the cloud. We'll be using that quite a bit as we go through these, these notebooks. So, you know, when you log in to Julia Hub, you'll see that there's a Pluto application available for launching in your Applications tab, uh, as well as if you go into the Applications tab, you'll see, you know, not just Pluto, but also that VS Code editor. We're not going to touch the VS Code editor today and, and instead focus entirely on running Pluto Notebooks. So you can launch Pluto Notebooks here, uh, just directly like this and kind of get a general purpose interface into the notebook environment that way. You can also go into the compute menu here on the top and there is now a dedicated Pluto section. Uh, we think that this is important enough that it, it deserves its own dedicated section in our compute tab here to launch and, and run Pluto notebook jobs. And we can go down and you know, start adding notebooks, start uh, working with notebooks in our, our, uh, our, our, our Julia Hub interface here. So you can see that I've already gone in here and added a bunch of folders uh, and added a bunch of notebooks. It's very easy to add uh, folders or add items to a folder. And you can see that we've arranged these things in uh, in folders, you can move them around, work with them very easily. Each one of these items is an independent notebook here. And I've just grabbed a few notebooks to, to start with here, including you know, some of the public notebooks that Pluto.jl publishes, uh, where we have these Pluto.jl samples. And I've gone in and simply uploaded notebooks here uh, from my computer from the, uh, uh, the Pluto repository. It's very simple and straightforward to do that. As Pluto notebooks are themselves just plain test, plain .jl files. So you can see I have a bunch of these all set up here, ready to go. And I can just hit the start notebook. And I'll say, let's have four threads, four gigabytes. And you can see that this is allows me to start a, a Pluto job that will run all of my Pluto notebooks. It's going to bring up a machine in the cloud that's capable and, and ready to run these Pluto notebooks. What it's doing is it's connecting uh, to the, the Julia Hub cluster, submitting this as a job. And you can see it here under my Pluto jobs. It is now, if I uh, just focus on the submitted and running jobs, you can see that this job here, it has been submitted. It's connecting and getting started. And in just a moment, it'll pop up as being ready to connect to. So that's how you start a, a Pluto job. Once that's launched, these start notebook uh, links here will change and will be uh, available for us to open. Uh, and there we go. So now we have our Pluto environment already running. Uh, you can see that 
This has now changed from a, an hourglass to a running here. You can also see that we've set up, you know, when I started this job, I set this up with a two hour time limit. So after we're, uh, we're done with this webinar, even if I forget to shut this down, I won't uh, just be spending money indiscriminately here. It'll shut this down for me. And if I ever want more time, I can easily go in here and say, hey, let's extend this time limit by an hour, for example. Uh, and that'll give me three hours now instead of just two. So that is kind of, you know, starting off these Pluto tasks. And you'll see now under all of my notebooks that I have here, they are all open links instead of uh, start the Pluto notebook uh, server links. So clicking this open link will kick off our, our Pluto server and, you know, connect into our Pluto server hopefully here just one second, uh, grab in and uh, uh, open this tab. I think it needs, needs to connect in. Give it one moment there. There we go. So now we've connected in and we are launching into our Pluto notebook environment here directly into that notebook that I put in here. So one of the, the previous challenges with Pluto on, on Julia Hub was just getting your notebooks up and running. And this is very straightforward, very easy to do. And, and sure enough, here we are, we have our, uh, our, our, our Jupyter notebook environment. And you can see here, this is the, the sample notebook where you can go in and you know, work with the, the cat and uh, you know, go in here, follow the prompts, uh, and this is all uh, highly responsive. Uh, and you know, you can go in here and, and follow these prompts uh, and, and get all of these things uh, working as you'd expect to. So this is how, how Pluto notebooks work. If you're not familiar with them, they're very, very similar to Jupyter notebooks. There are kind of two big distinctions with a Jupyter notebook. Uh, one is that this is pure Julia. Uh, it, is, it is backed by pure Julia. The other is that it's completely reactive. So you'll see that as I change my code, uh, it actually changes all the downstream cells, not just the cell that I changed, but the entire notebook state is set up consistently and and uh, you know it always is reactive. It almost works more like an Excel spreadsheet than a, a, a Jupyter notebook. And that you know when you're used to an Excel spreadsheet, you know you change a cell and all the other cells that are dependent upon it they change as well, right? That's kind of the same mental model that we have here. It's a fully reactive programming paradigm. So you can see that this text here, right? This well done, your cat is called Garfield now that was pre-populated. That's actually run by code here. And I can hide this code or show it. The outputs are displayed above the, the code cell instead of below them. And, and that way, the, the code itself is almost more like a, a figure label than it is, you know, the, the driving thing. And so it's uh, one of the the, the core mental models of the of the Pluto notebook is that the code, while important, you know, you may want to hide it, you may want to uh, to focus more on the outputs, and you'll you'll see as I change this cat name here, uh, as you go through and, and change this, it actually automatically reruns all the dependent cells, uh, and so I didn't need to go in and say, hey, let's rerun this cell again after updating this, the entire notebook is in a consistent state. So that's one of the beautiful things about Pluto. Uh, and, and we're leveraging that really awesome work by, by Pluto JL here on Julia Hub, just by make, giving you a simple and easy way to launch these and interactively work with them. Ah, I'm sorry, it sounds like I, I misspoke. Uh, Dave mentioned in the comments, apparently earlier, I, I said, if you attended JuliaCon a few months ago, that was uh, a mistake on my my behalf. I meant to say PlutoCon. Uh, there was a, a little mini convention uh, of a bunch of really cool talks um, where lots of folks, uh, you know, shared their cool Pluto notebooks and such. And that was a few months ago to celebrate Pluto's first birthday. 
Uh, so as a, a special dedicated mini convention, as Dave mentioned in the chat, we are having the upcoming JuliaCon presentations uh, at the end of this month, where there will be lots more to, to see, and, and I'm sure there will be lots of presentations built on, on Pluto itself, uh, as well as uh, a state of the Pluto uh, ecosystem uh, from Pluto developers and, and many more. So look forward to that coming up in a few weeks. And also, if you're interested in, in seeing uh, some of the cool notebooks from PlutoCon, you can, can search that uh, on I, on Google or YouTube, find those, those presentations. All right, so this is you know pretty straightforward here, right? A really nice way of, of seeing these uh, going through this. Let's jump back into uh, Julia Hub, go back to my Pluto page here and, and I go in to uh, take a look at a few more things that are possible with the new Pluto support. Uh, so that was, you know, looking at the getting started notebook here, you can, of course, go in and look at any of these notebooks, just hitting this open button, it connects to that same single Pluto session that we're currently running, right, so you don't need to launch multiple machines, have multiple machines, they're running independent Pluto sessions on a single machine here, so they don't conflict with each other, and are happy to, to do these things, and the interactivity notebook here, the sample notebook, shows off some of the really cool uh, UI elements that, that are possible here where you know you can bind values to input widgets and all sorts of really nice things where as I change this widget, you can see that it's dynamically and uh, you know uh, automatically updating the cell below here from from zero to a hundred, right? And uh, really nice way of doing interactive explorations. So this is, you know, kind of will walk you through that. And of course, these are just the Pluto sample notebooks. One of the really awesome uses of Pluto recently has been in Professor Alan Edelman's climate, uh, not climate class, class on computational thinking. Uh, and, you know, I just went to that uh, class lecture site. You can find that on computationalthinking.mit.edu, I think. Uh, is the uh, lecture notebook. Maybe Aditya, if you're able to uh, throw that link in the chat, that would be great. Uh, but you can grab any of those notebooks, you know, download them, upload them to, to Julia Hub, and they will run here. And the, the first thing they do is, you know, setting up your environment. This will take just a moment to do because it's, it's grabbing lots of packages using differential equations, plots, data frames, doing all these things. So the first thing it does is, is set up that environment and that will take just a moment. Once that's set, you'll be able to, to work through this and, and take that look. Yes, thanks, Dave. I found that link for me and threw it in the chat. So this is a really great use of Pluto notebooks and you can go through these and, and uh, learn Lots about not just uh, uh, Pluto notebooks and not just Julia, but how to use them and, and ways of, of thinking about computation. And one of the, the really nice examples that they work through is modeling the climate throughout that course. Uh, so there's lots of modeling examples, lots of really nice graphs, lots of really nice uh, uh, work on, on this here. So that is, is uh, uh, running you know, more complicated notebooks. As that's running, I'll, I'll go in back into Julia Hub and take a look at a few of the other key features that we have here. So you can see here in my, my Pluto notebooks, uh, in these folders that I've set up, you can see that as I add uh, folders and, and work with them here, you can, all, all these files are available for me as, as a user, right, to open them and edit them and work with them. But there's also this toggle on the right here where I can go in and explicitly say, hey, let's make this folder public. Uh, let's make it publicly accessible to everybody in, uh, in the Julia Hub ecosystem to be able to, to see the work that I've done to share this out. And what that does is that that makes this available within the exploration tab for everybody. So if I go in here under the explore tab now, not only are we able to explore throughout the package ecosystem of Julia, but we're also able to explore all the cool notebooks that folks have marked as public, 
And because this is brand new, we just uh, released this functionality this week. Not many folks have done this so far, but here you can see, here is this notebook of my Pluto samples, my username here and my Pluto samples notebook. And I can go in and look at any of these notebooks myself. You can also go in and, and see, you know, uh, not Fonz uh, went through and uploaded a bunch of notebooks. This is someone internal to, to Julia Computing, uploaded a bunch of, uh, of notebooks from this PlutoCon convention. Uh, where you can go through and take a look at, you know, some of these things. So you can go in and, and look at all of these notebooks that, that others have, have generated and worked with here. What makes this particularly compelling is that as you work through this, right, so if I just click this direct link, you'll see that these notebooks are actually rendered for me. Uh, and you can go in and, and look at the rendered output of these notebooks, including graphs, including uh, uh, you know some support for um, for scroll bars and things. Now, uh, unless these notebooks are set up uh, smartly with JavaScript, this won't rerun Julia code right here. This is just a static preview of the notebook. Uh, and kind of gives you a sense of what all is possible here. So this goes through, you know, all of the really cool presentations that were done during JuliaCon, and you can go in and explore these. And now uh, what makes this really cool is that I can just go in here and edit or run this notebook uh, in, uh, and, you know, we'll have this available in Julia Hub very, very shortly. This isn't quite set up yet to, to run in Julia Hub, but we'll do that very shortly to fork these into your own user and get that working for you. So that's the next step here, but for now we can go in and, and look at these. And that also applies to my notebooks that I've uploaded here. So you can go in here and see uh, in my Pluto.jl samples, these, you know, we had walked through uh, this uh, getting started thing and recall that I had changed this notebook, right? Now this static HTML preview was already generated for me. I'd gone through and generated this already. Let's regenerate this HTML preview for me with the latest work that I've done. I can go back here to my Pluto notebook pane and under my notebook here, I can go in and say, hey, let's regenerate all of these notebooks. And that requires launching a little compute engine that, that generates the output of all the notebooks in this folder. It'll generate the HTML, the static previews for all eight of these notebooks. And it sets up a job that will just do this asynchronously for me. So this is how you can uh, go in and update the, the notebooks as you work with them. You know, the, the generated links here, I had generated them from earlier. Uh, and now that I've changed this notebook, right, the, the last edited time here is, uh, you know, just 10 minutes ago when I've changed the name of, of the cat and such, and I'm regenerating those. So just like any Julia Hub computing job, I can go in and follow along with its progress here. You can see it's generating this HTML. I can even watch the logs as it goes, you know, loads the packages that it needs, generates the output, uploads those HTML uh, files, previews for me that allow me to see that. So these are all of the features that we've been working on, all of these really cool, uh, uh, patterns and, and such that allow you to uh, really dig in to this. So with that, we have a, a question on the chat asking about you know, running notebooks in the cloud is something that folks do with Jupyter, for example. There, there are lots of, uh, of, of uh, ways of running Jupyter notebooks. Why would you need a different kind of notebook or a new notebook instead of just using Jupyter notebooks? And really, you don't need a new kind of notebook to do this compute on the cloud. Uh, it's just a, a you know the the first class Julia notebook model um, that lots of folks are enjoying and, and using. And uh, there is support for running these Pluto notebooks in other places as well, such as uh, on Binder and such. Uh, but we're working on making a first class experience here on Julia Hub. 
we're focusing on Pluto notebooks instead of Jupiter notebooks, uh, simply because we see that as where the Julia ecosystem is moving in general, uh, where folks are, are excited about notebooks in general uh, within Julia. And, and you know, speaking personally, I really like the execution model of a Jupiter notebook, or I'm sorry, of a Pluto notebook uh, over and above that of Jupiter notebooks. And really one of the main reasons here, and one of the main reasons that I find Jupiter notebooks a little hard to reason about is because you can always go back and change code, right? Change the code that you wrote, re-execute it, but you're your dependent cells don't automatically update. And it's really easy to get out of sync, right? Where you can easily end up with a notebook that's not reproducible just because, you know, as you're iteratively refining the notebook, you go back to, you know, you know, one of your earlier cells, you change it. And then you have to remember to rerun all of the downstream cells of that. Or even worse, you know, some of your cells might be, you know, out of order, right? <laughs> you might have cells out of order and then it's really hard to keep track of this. Well, Pluto notebooks just have one state and that is the total state of the entire network, of the entire notebook, where it doesn't matter where these things live in the notebook. Pluto keeps track of, of what, you know, what cat is, where it was assigned and where, you know, which cells need to get rerun as you change this. So this will change both cells above and below it as I change my cat to uh, uh, different names, uh, you know, go in and, and change the cat a name and, and go on and, and such. So uh, you can see that that changed a cell above this cell. It doesn't matter where this cell lives. That's one of the things that I like about this. It means that you have to be a little bit careful about your, your organization, right? And, and how this works, but it, all, it gives you the capability of, of really nice, uh, outputs and such. Any other questions about any of the features that I've showed today? Uh, we can go back to the this uh, uh, more advanced notebook here where you can kind of gain a, a sense of some of the power that you have here in that, you know, as, as we set this up, you can go in and, you know, dynamically change some of these variables and watch these things change as you go up uh, up and down. And you know, these things allow you dynamically change all of the, the graphs that you have. In fact, let me move this slider down closer to the graph so you can watch it change as, as we go, right? So if your starting temperature is lower or less, it's changing the the model of our environment uh, as you go. So you can kind of see how, how this slider changes. And remember that this is an independent cell here, right? This is just a cell that sets this start starting temperature. And this is another cell here that just graphs the output of a differential equation solution. Uh, and so all of these things are dynamically changing. You can see how this is changing the, uh, the differential equation as you go through. Um, really, really nice way of, of demonstrating the power of having these knobs and, and interactive whistles here where, you know, if this were a Jupyter notebook, I would need to change this and then rerun this cell or potentially have this all as one cell, right? That's kind of how uh, the Jupyter model would be, right? You would have this widget as part of this cell, but then that means that you couldn't have another graph that would you know, also uh, update as well, right? You couldn't have two graphs that, that depended upon this. It's just that one cell. Um, and this uh, allows you to have multiple things dependent upon this. Any other questions? We can go back and take a look at our job here. You can see here that we're going through generating these notebooks, uh, automatically updating them, uh, submitting them. They're not taking much time to, to generate here. You know, each notebook doesn't take much time. So it uh, uh, finishes relatively quickly. We can see here, oh, yep, there we go. Almost done, I think, uh, generating the last notebook. 
And now I believe we are complete. Uh, we've completed generating our notebooks. Uh, oh, I get logged out. There we go. Yep. Sure enough, uh, we have our our job. We generated the notebooks. It took us just five minutes to generate all those updates. And so now, if I go back. I'll see my my changes to all of those things in my uh, Jupyter notebooks. So this is how you'll be able to explore notebooks, create your own notebooks, make them public, you know, share them with the world, and give uh, you know be able to to see these things and allow others to work with them. Uh, really fun way of of exploring these and allowing you to to work with them and, and see how this all. Uh, falls out. So here you can see here are the latest changes uh, or the changes that there were uh, when I, I hit that submit button. Uh, so we're no longer Garfield, we're now Fido and, and so on and so forth. If there are no other questions, I, uh, oh, great. Uh, I will, we'll move into a time of question and answer here uh, and uh, field any questions that folks have. Matthew asks, do the outputs get saved in the notebook file or only in the HTML output? That's one of the differences with Ju uh, Pluto notebooks over uh, Jupyter notebooks. And that is that the actual uh, notebook file itself um, is just a Julia file. Uh, so if I go back to my Pluto pane here, for example, and go in, you know, say, take a look at this getting started file, or actually let's look at this climate model, right? This was where we were seeing kind of some of those uh, advanced plots and such. If I go in here and just download this notebook, this will download the notebook source to my computer. I can open this up and uh, take a look at it. And let's uh, hide all of those. Just go in and grab that one uh, file here. Where did it go? Here we are. So this is what a Pluto notebook here looks like. Uh, you can go in and see uh, that we have uh, all of these things. And, and the, the format of a Pluto notebook is just a Julia script. This is just a straightforward Julia script here that allows you to actually run this as a Julia script. So we don't, unlike a, a Jupyter notebook file, which is kind of this uh, complicated JSON, this is just a straightforward uh, Julia file with some special comments, some special Pluto.jl comments here that kind of tells it where the cells live and such but none of the outputs are saved here, right? So if you go down to, for example, these plots, here's one of these plotting cells that we were looking at. And this is just a, you know, just the Julia code that was required to plot this. And so uh, one of the downsides with Pluto notebooks is that the outputs don't get saved in the, uh, in the file itself. But that's also a blessing uh, because it makes these Pluto notebooks far easier to version control. You don't have to worry about all these blobs getting stored. They're, the files themselves are much smaller, right? This entire file is just you know, 500 lines of plain text uh, for a relatively complicated uh, uh, Jupyter, uh, Pluto notebook. Uh, and you can see you know, all of the, the information that it needs in order to reconstruct it is right here. So that is how you can, can work with these and download them. So that's why generating static HTML previews is nice, right? Because the, the .jl files themselves don't really contain any information about the outputs. Uh, and that's why we need to run a little code runner here uh, in order to actually you know, execute them, do that. And that, that requires compute to do, right? Because you actually need to solve the, the uh, the differential equation in this case, do the plotting. Uh, and so you actually need to run code. And so that's why when we hit this generate button, we, we start a job to do so. Uh, and so that's why this is set up the way it is.
Nice, we got a, a whole bunch of other questions here. Thomas asks, does Pluto support making three-dimensional objects and viewing them in a window uh, like X3D or X3DOM? Uh, so the the model of Pluto is entirely, you know, uh, based on the, the notebook and interface in your web browser. So you're not able to, you know, launch into a, another GUI application like you can sometimes do at a, at a Julia REPL, depending upon how, how you have Julia installed on your own machine. So the way to do 3D plots is, is using some of the 3D plotting libraries like Plotly uh, that allow you to do that directly in the, the web browser itself. Uh, where you know Plotly has really nice 3D graphics and and you know interactivity that way, uh, it'll entirely be dependent upon the plotting library that you use there. Another question asking: Is it possible to run R and Python code in Pluto? And the answer there is no. Pluto is uh, a Julia specific answer and and really geared towards towards Julia itself and and in fact leans heavily on Julia's internals. The fact that you can you know, see assignments in Julia, parse it out and, and automatically compute those dependent cells. Uh, it would you know, take someone with, from R or Python doing the, the same thing there. Uh, and I think that that would end up being a completely separate system. Uh, Pluto is designed from the ground up to be focused on, on Julia. Uh, whereas Jupyter was designed from the ground up to be kind of this language agnostic thing, in fact. Jupyter comes from Julia, Python, and R. Uh, those were the first three languages supported by the by the environment, uh, and that's that's where the name Jupyter comes from. Pluto, on the other hand, uh, while riffing off the planetary scheme, is is entirely Julia. Uh, another question from from Thomas on you know Professor Edelman's course. Uh, now that we're in, into the Q and A session, I can just bring that up directly. Computational thinking MIT. Right now, so the course was run uh, in fall and spring of this last academic year, and this was run before we had these these sorts of things on uh, Julia Hub. So you'll see in the the notebook itself that edit or run in the cloud, uh, you know, there are uh, some experimental work to get this running on Binder. Binder, while, while working nicely with uh, kind of general purpose things, hasn't been geared towards Julia, and so it takes a little bit longer to get a session. There's some things that aren't quite as, as nice, but it is free. Uh, so that is, that is an option. That's how this was set up to run. You can also, you know, download the notebook URL which is how I got this onto Julia Hub. So I just grabbed the, the notebook URL and, and uploaded it into Julia Hub. So these, these directions on the computational thinking site, you know, will we'll walk you through how to do this locally or on Binder. There's not instructions for Julia Hub because Julia Hub didn't really exist with Pluto support uh, while this class was running. A good question uh, from Peter asking, can you print a Pluto notebook to a PDF? And you know, that's a great question. I've not really tried that. I uh, see what happens here. If I just use you know Chrome's printing tools here, you can see that it actually does come up with a, a, a PDF option here. Let's just see what this actually looks like. Um, I'm doing this live, I've never tried this before. Uh, but I can save this as a PDF here. Uh, and sure enough, we ended up with a climate model PDF. Um, let's see what it looks like. Uh, actually looks fairly reasonable here. Um, this isn't bad at all. So you can just use your built-in browser setup to do these uh, uh, PDFs and such. Um, it's just like printing a web page, right? Um, but this actually looks pretty good. Another question about running notebooks locally. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can run all of these notebooks locally. It requires you to download and install Julia yourself, install Pluto yourself, uh, run Pluto. And uh, there are really good instructions on Pluto's website on how to do that. Um, Julia Hub just takes care of all of those setup pieces and runs it in 
directly in a browser without you needing to install anything beyond the web browser yourself. Uh, yes, and Aditya, who I really need to acknowledge uh, during this, this webinar, who has done a lot of the work on the Pluto integration on Julia itself, uh, has been working tirelessly over the last few weeks, getting all of these things uh, together. So there is also a dedicated uh, export function here, which I had forgotten about here, where you can export to a static HTML or a static PDF built in to this, uh, to um, uh, Pluto Notebooks. And it looks like that actually leads on Chrome's PDF uh, output there to do that. Or I can ask for an HTML, kind of like what the, uh, the um, static HTML generator does on Julia Hub. So that downloads it locally and you can open this up. And I think this will have the outputs as well, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see here. Yeah. Yep, sure enough, all the outputs are here as the, the static HTML, rendered HTML. Uh, and that's effectively what the, the HTML generation service does on, on Julia Hub, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, nice, and uh, Michael notes in the chat that uh, Chrome and Chromium generally do better at rendering these PDFs than, than some other browsers. Uh, and I think that this is actually a self-contained HTML file here. Uh, we can go in and uh, just you know, open this up. Uh, let's see here. Da, da, da. And I think that this actually has all of the, um, oh, let's see. Oh, that's right. It actually does lean on, um, on HTML and or on some JavaScript loaded elsewhere. So you do need to be connected to, to the internet to get this. Um, interesting. Uh, the, yeah, I, and I think that, you know, yeah, I'm not sure uh, with the the Julia Hub generated HTML, right? That's all set up to be, you know, on Julia Hub. So you, of course, need an internet connection to get there itself. Um, so that's all right. There was also a question just kind of going over, asking about the, the uh, you know, the execution model of these notebooks and kind of digging in just asked me to reiterate a, a little bit about how this differs from uh, a Jupyter Notebook. And I can do this just one more time here, just to kind of talk about this a little bit more concretely, where, you know, if I had a, a Jupyter Notebook, right, and I uh, go in here, uh, or any notebook, right, and I say, you know, let's define this variable A as two, uh, and have some output dependent cell here that, you know, cubes it plus three or something like that, right? You can calculate this. In a standard Jupyter notebook, if I went back, you know, after running both these cells and went back and re-executed this with A equals five, for example, and I just ran this one cell, it would only update the outputs of the cell that I ran. And I would need to go through and make sure that all dependent cells that reference whatever I just updated get updated. Um, whereas in a Pluto notebook, that is automatically done for me. Uh, and we can make this a little bit more concrete if I you know, make this a, uh, a larger cell block where I, let's sleep for five seconds and then compute the result here, right? So one, two, three, four, five, you can see it executing for those five seconds. And uh, you know, so yeah, five seconds there to get the answer 128. If I change A now again and run this one more time, you'll see that it ran that, and now it's currently running this cell without me ever asking it to, right? It automatically did this, ran this. It took five seconds to run again, uh, and that is the core difference here. Um, and the, the really nice thing is that once a Pluto notebook stops its execution, you know that the entire state of the notebook is reproducible uh, because all the dependent cells, everything that has been updated has uh, automatically been rerun and uh, you know 
no matter what you do from here on out, that you'll be able to uh, reproduce it. You don't, you won't end up in an inconsistent state. You can go through here and you know maybe disable this cell. Say you know let's hold off on this. This cell might take some execution time. That explicitly grays it out now, and you know you can kind of get a sense that hey you know we we have this cell disabled. Uh, the output is still there, um, but it might get stale, right? If I if I change this and it's explicitly marked as being disabled, and so I know that that output might be stale. And I can go back and re-enable it later. And then it'll immediately execute itself because it knows that it needs to update. I can, another key difference here is if I tried to assign A again in another cell, this will actually error and say, hey, we have multiple definitions here. I don't know which cell should take priority. Uh, and it actually tells it me in both of the places that A was defined. And I just need to you know, choose which one is going to be the the one and then it again automatically reruns my entire notebook so that is how this all works out hopefully that's awesome, clear yeah. i don't have a jupyter notebook to to show the the comparison but i think those of you who are familiar with jupyter notebooks will will see that awesome matt and some great questions everyone um I don't see any more questions in the chat. So we certainly want to thank everyone for your participation. Thanks, Matt, for the excellent presentation. For the recorded version of this presentation and our past webinars, you can re visit the resources tab at juliacomputing.com. For any help in your existing Julia use case or upcoming Pluto notebook work on Julia Hub, please reach out to us at sales at ju juliacomputing.com and we'd be happy to help. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great remainder of your week.